Okay, so we've seen where aircraft burn their power and how much they burn. Can we make planes electric? Can we decarbonize them? Well, let's do the maths. An Airbus A320 uses 25,000 litres of fuel to fly 6,000 kilometres. So at 36 megajoules per litre, the combustion energy, that's 10 to the 12 joules. Now, as we saw for cars, an electric uh, plane would be more efficient than a petrol-driven plane. Um, it could maybe be twice as efficient from the Carnot limit. I'm not sure you could do anything about the uh, propulsion limit. But with electric motors, you could maybe have a huge number of propellers all up and down the plane, rather than just a few engines, which will give you the large area, slower speed. So maybe you could do something about that. So let's be really optimistic and assume that it's actually about five times more efficient than a petrol-driven thing. So we only need about 2 by 10 to the 11 joules for an electric plane. I don't think you could achieve that, but let's be optimistic. Now, one kilogram of lithium-ion battery stores about one megajoule. So we're going to need 2 by 10 to the power 11 divided by a million to turn into kilograms. Um, 200,000 kilograms, 200 tonnes of battery to power our extremely efficient Airbus A320 electric version. And that's just prohibitive. 200 tonnes. The whole plane only weighs 70 tonnes fully loaded, so the mass of the plane to travel this distance, 6,000 kilometres, which is not particularly long range for an aircraft, is you know, three times the mass of the plane. So basically, battery-powered planes are a non-starter, unless we get some dramatic improvement in battery energy density. It, you could have battery planes for short hops, maybe, um, particularly within cities or for air taxis or something like that. You might be able to do it, but for you know, flying from Australia to England or even Australia to uh, Fiji, no way. You need some way to store much more energy with much less weight. Now, the best way to have large amounts of energy from a small weight is nuclear power. So having a small nuclear reactor could certainly do this. Um, I'm not sure, however, that the politics of having aircraft lumbering overhead with radioactive materials on board day in and day out is going to be very popular. And at the moment, the price of nuclear reactors is prohibitively expensive, and it's very hard to build something small enough. And while the nuclear reactor itself could be small, all the shielding to stop the passengers getting irradiated becomes very heavy. So that's probably a non-starter. There were discussions back in the 50s about nuclear-powered planes. So most current discussions are about using biofuels. So these are the same sort of hydrocarbons the planes are currently using, which means you can use very similar engines and take advantage of all the highly mature technology for these aircraft. The idea being, though, that instead of uh, mining them so they're not renewable, you'd actually grow plants, somehow ferment the sugarcane or whatever you're growing, and turn it into a biofuel. This is somewhat problematic because if you remember there's actually a very low efficiency of turning sunlight into energy in plants, much worse than solar cells. So you're going to need a lot of farmland producing some high energy crop, corn or uh, sugar cane to turn into biofuels. And that of course is farmland that then can't produce food and we're having enough trouble feeding the world's huge population at the moment. And then you've got a whole infrastructure, you've got to ship it to the places where the aircraft are refueling and do everything like that. But this is certainly happening, and planes are already running with a small blend of biofuel in as experiments. And this is a relatively easy technology, because it's quite similar to how planes already work. What else could you store it in? Ideally, you'd like some form of a hydrocarbon or something with the same energy density that you could create using electricity. And the obvious case of this is hydrogen. You use solar plants to split water to make green hydrogen, and then you use that to power it. Now, hydrogen is actually better than normal fuel. It's more like 110 megajoules per kilogram uh, rather than the 50 or so for uh, petrol. The trouble is hydrogen is very low density. It's very hard to store it and um, you need pressurized tanks to keep it in, which are heavy. You can't just put it in the wings like you do normal fuel. And it's big because density is large. You need very large fuel tanks. But there may be some other possibilities. Maybe you could use solar energy to produce some other form of uh, fuel by maybe combining the hydrogen with, uh, with carbon somehow. 
There are probably possibilities here, but this is absolutely not a solved problem. We do not know how to do this. If you have to ask, how do you decarbonize air travel? You'd have to say, the only technology which we're reasonably sure can work is biofuels. They are somewhat problematic. It's going to be very hard to get enough biofuels to do it, especially for a country like Australia, where the, most of the flights are very long distance ones. Um, you're going to have to build a whole new industry of growing and fermenting these things to supply the planes coming in and out of Australia and give over a lot of farmland to it. Uh, very expensive. There could be some better technique producing some form of dense hydrocarbon using solar power in some renewable way, but that does not exist as a commercializable technology at the moment. So this is probably the hardest thing to deal with, decarbonizing air travel. And it's a problem because air travel is growing really quickly around the world. It's small at the moment. It's only two and a half, three and a half percent, depending how you count it, of the global warming effect. But it's a very fast growing amount. And that's going to be difficult. Electric cars, we know how to build. They're already building millions of the things. Um, but this is something where no one's really done it, and it's not a mature technology.